Hey, Sean, appreciate the comments. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I, I agree with adding that as metric. I, it's going to be really interesting to see what the supply chain <laughs> thinks about. Oh, that. yeah, we've got a ways that, before yeah. we, yes, we get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, for sure. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I don't have any problem, you know, throw, throwing it out there, but, you know, as a, you yeah. know, you've seen the embedded carbon of, you know, this, which I think is a much more widely accepted need for that has been a, you know, a huge struggle, let alone water, which many people just are so still utterly ignorant about. Yeah, I mean, as we're, you know, I know at least for us, as we do our LCAs and, and then post them in, you know, our EPDs or PEPs or, you know, we, um, we look at all the stuff, right? involved in so carbon all that and so actually water is in the report that we have you know but obviously we're we're focused on like digitizing the uh, the carbon bit of it so it's easier to to, mm. to uh get out there but um, yeah man. uh all right we'll see how our attendance goes today no with, with all this stuff i mean i think you know the Snyders of the world are always going to, you know, lead the way because it's kind of that economies of scale, in my opinion, that, you know, yeah. you guys can either internally do it or you can go out and hire, you know, a consultant to do it. You know, I think the reality is we all know once you get a couple layers down the supply chain, you tend to get to more mom and pop shops who, <laughs> you know, it's just like there's nothing wrong. It's a great, you know, yeah. benefit of our economy that everything is not massive corporations, but it's I think it's just going to be hard to get these yeah. small shops that you know just want to spit out nuts and bolts and you know sheet metal to start accounting for right all of this stuff which gets very complicated very quickly yeah 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 i agree hey where uh where, where are you located what time zone are you uh i'm in northern virginia oh okay very good i grew i grew up in northern virginia so many years grew, ago grew up in new jersey you know so <laughs> where i before find myself you know before they were data centers i grew up there <laughs> yeah i mean still probably lots of fiber running underground true 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 yeah there was a well right a aol and uunet was the kind of driver way back when yeah you know there's that book uh was it like tubes you know the story of the internet Oh, I haven't read that. Oh, yeah, that that, that that's a really good one. Um, oh, okay. And then it's a, you know, kind of goes through the whole, you know, ARPANET and all of that, and yeah. you know, you know, the the tubes of the internet. And he wrote a the same author wrote another book about basically a weather prediction and kind of from like the beginning of time to you know larger and larger models and you know kind of large scale data collection and starting from like World War One and World War Two to modern stuff so yeah. it's really interesting yeah. kind of especially with all the stuff that we all work on yeah 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 that's neat we uh oh hey peter um how you doing hi uh let's see if this works <laughs> uh, yeah well hi hey, there we go hey. uh, i'm i'm in my office but uh but my uh but my computer is not here so i'm just trying to join via my smartphone. I'm not sure uh, how that will work, but. <laughs> you sound perfect, you, you look, it's uh, hair grainy, but it's uh, it's good. You got it, you're, that's a nice looking office you got there. Uh, not really. Well, let me just, okay, it, it looks the view, better the now. behind you is nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, th th this is, this is, um, this is actually the um, brand new, uh, brand new um, building for IT, old <laughs> IT students at Uppsala University. Ah, um, okay. So uh, you see the you see the pendulum maybe down down there. I don't know yeah. if you can see. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's the Foucault's uh, pendulum. So you know the the yeah. one that shows world uh, world's uh, rotation, world's rotation. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
stairs almost look like an MC Escher, you know, drawing of, you know, stairs going oh, yeah. to stairs going into stairs. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. That is true. Or or like a big uh, boat or something. But yeah, I, I like the Escher um, um, uh, analogy. Mm-hmm. And I'm just uh, finalizing my my um, my um, PhD thesis. Uh, so I'm reading, reading it right now. Um, there it is. Nice. Um, so I, I will go to England on uh, on Sunday to defend my thesis on next Wednesday. Oh, well, good luck. Thank yeah, you. Good luck. That's great. Yeah. Thanks. So uh, busy day. Yeah, yeah, good. And where are you, Rob? It, lo- it looks very nice. And you have a painting on, on the wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my I'm in my home office right now. So yeah, that's a, I don't know Seinfeld. You have the, the Kramer, the Kramer painting. You know, it's a it's a poster actually. So it's a, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a okay. it's, yeah. <laughs> show my age actually my my uh my my youngest kid well he's 21 he he's he's enjoying watching seinfeld despite it being super old series <laughs> oh it's kramer from seinfeld oh yeah. no it's, yeah, yes. it's, it's, it's so small on, on my screen <laughs> yeah cool um all right so uh hey i'll go uh, let's get going with with what we have here um i'm gonna share my screen let's see here This one, two, three, share. All right. So pretty simple agenda today. Uh, you know, the, the PowerPoint for the summit uh, was approved. Again, it's very simple and basic. It's, 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 it's on the shared drive, but I can show this, you know. Uh, uh, Priya is, oh, first off, anybody here going going to the summit? in San Jose. All right. All right. I'll be co-presenting the uh, uh, waste, or what are we calling it? The, uh, oh, the waste energy here. carbon. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. Oh, good. Energy, water, and uh, carbon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just, it's, we're still calling it the WHE work, work stream or water, heat, energy. Yeah. 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 Good, good. yeah. Yeah, and you know, so there'll be an intro to, uh, you know, Priya will do an intro to the the, the work group overall, and then um, and then I'm gonna kick off. You know, it's really it's not that many slides, but I'm gonna do this, and I uh, I think I showed this last time, you know, a little little teaser. Hey, which data centers more sustainable, and a little systems diagram of the box of the data center and all the stuff that goes in and all the stuff that goes out, and uh, and then you know, talk about how it fits into the OCP ready facility and then a uh, high level of what we're looking at. And then I do, you know, depending on how the questions and stuff go, I say speed round. I'm not going to dig into, you know, here's all the different metrics that we can go through, but I expect mm-hmm. with 20 minutes, we won't even get, get to these slides, but I kind of put them in there for fun. Mm-hmm. So that's it. It's kind of an intro to the whole thing. Um, and that's about it. Um, I did want to uh, talk about, um, and maybe I'll talk to Priya about this. It'd be good if we have a, you know, even during the day or something a, or lunchtime, a meetup. And so I was going to see if there was anybody on the call that has a, a booth or something where, and, and, you know, we, you know, Hey, at one o'clock or whatever, let's meet up and see people in person. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, um, my current company does not, uh, it'll be just me. Um, yeah, but we could just pick something, you know, someone's booth. That's true. Um, like I know Meta will have a booth. Microsoft will have a booth. Um, you know, all, all the big hyperscalers. You know, the that's big, true. Like, well, Google dumb. Priya. Maybe we'll ask Priya. You know, uh, since she's Google, if they have a booth, we can meet up at that one. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I'll double check. Good point. All right. Um. So cool. I'll, I'll let me let me. Uh, pop into the paper here. And so I'm, I'm actively editing this thing online. 
Google Google Drive, and and I'll just I, I did a bit more work since last time, and let me just show you where we are. So um, this is all the beginning googly gawk. Uh, this is the tenant stuff that we have to include. Let me zoom in. Uh, I have a big screen here. There we go. Is that, is that hopefully that's better? I know Peter, you're looking at it on a phone, so good luck. <laughs> Uh, revision. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have my copy. Oh, okay, okay. So every time I, I at least at this draft stage, I'm not. I'm not putting like every time I edited an update revision. I'm just kind of keeping it. I just put a new date here when I go in and, and do a little few things. So. Um, uh, do, 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 do. So based on some comics we had before, let's see. We've talked about internal. We talked about external. And I think I got to put a trademark here because Mark Dancy will give me a hard time about that. Let me do that now so I don't forget. Oh, format, text, uh, superscript. All right. And, um, and then we, we had made the decision last time, instead of having like three uh, levels of, hey, this is, you know, this is, you know, mandatory mandatory whatever or we just switched it to the way the wording that they use in the ocp ready facility program required and recommended so that simplified that and we can go through and actually make a judgment call on which metrics we think are required versus what would be recommended um added some stakeholders uh and i did this last time so uh let me know what you think I, about these. So internal stakeholders, designers, operators, owners, executives, and then external. And here I'm thinking of the OCP, right? Go ahead, sorry, Peter. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, no, no, I was just coughing. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, then external, uh, you know, tenants, investors, the OCP community, especially when they're trying to go for, uh, you know, OCP ready certification, municipal leaders, local community. So I think that covers most of it. Okay. Um, all right. So the, so for the metrics and let me, let's see. The, so uh, let's see the first thing, Sean, um, let me go through before I'll get down to the comments. Um, yep. We, I haven't made the change here. We first, there was a comment last time about think about another column for internal versus external reporting. Um, I, I don't know if I want it to, to, I think I'm going to hold on that before I, I do the table. I made a, 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 a we'll get to it at the bottom, a whole paragraph on reporting. And I think there's a whole lot we can put in there. So I'll cover that. Let's, and, and want to get your, your all's input. Um, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a comment from last time. So here's what I'm thinking is when appropriate under, as we, as, as, as we go down, we'll have a section for every single metric. Um, and, and I want to talk about the organization of that, but we could dive into, Hey, if you're concerned about total energy consumption, you can look at, you know, cooling system, COP, UPS efficiency, and other, like, I'll, I'll call them like sub metrics or more detailed things that people can kind of look at in order to, uh, optimize a particular higher level metric. Um, uh, so I think that could be done in the description of each metric. Now here's a big question for the for the team here. Um, I rem so first I had in here uh, IT utilization, and in the last discussion, if you remember, we did have a comment because I think in the uh, EU regulations they are looking at adding that in eventually. It's it's talked about. It's not like going to be I think the first rev because this is a OCP ready facility recognition program that this is mainly directed at. And most of these people are co-location. I, I just, to simplify it, removed IT utilization because uh, collecting the data from the tenants compared to the hosting data center facility folks, I think is hard. Plus our group is specifically the 
the uh, OCP facility uh, work group. So I, mm -hmm. I, I it. Now, uh, an idea I had, and uh, you can completely say it's a uh, good or bad is under the energy and, and Peter, this kind of, I, I thought of this when, when, as you were discussing um, concerns about, you know, large data center operators coming into a community and basically sucking up all the renewable energy uh, uh, resources, right? So where their power yeah. purchase agreements and stuff, right? So, so, you know, sometimes that can be viewed as, uh, you know, not a good, uh, they're not a good neighbor, right? <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one, it's like, you don't want to discourage them from using um, um, renewable energy. Uh, but one of the things that I know with Enerco we're thinking about is what can a data center do to help enable renewable energy in the on the local grid specifically. And some of that has to do with participation in grid services. In the Nordics, I know very popular is uh, FF, you know, a couple of different fast frequency response uh, type of metrics. You know, there's peak shaving, there's, there's, a, there's a, depending on where you are, a variety of grid services. And so I, I, an idea I had, well, let's discuss, is to create a, another line item, a metric, and it's a yes, no question. Are you participating in grid services? Yes or no. And then at least it makes them think about, well, oh, maybe I should, maybe there's uh, something I can do to help with renewables and that thing. So yeah, P uh, Sean. This is just kind of my ignorance because I'm a water guy, not a power guy. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to learn more about this, but one of the things I'm trying to understand is, is the renewables you're using actually in any way close to where it's being used? I don't know if that's what you're, you're getting into. Like I, from what I've understand in the United States, you've got the Eastern interconnect, the Western interconnect and ERCA. Power does not essentially move between those. So right. if you're in Virginia, buying solar from Utah is useless. But like, right. is, is there a way to factor in like, great, where in Northern Virginia, you're buying renewable energies within the PJM, um, you know, RTO, like, okay, that's good, but you're you're buying it in, in Utah, that's useless. Like, is there any way to quantify so, that? Yeah, I think, so uh, the third metric on the list is total renewable energy consumption. And we can kind of put uh, very, you know, specifics mm -hmm. about, so if, if a company were to report, hey, I'm using X amount of renewable energy, uh, this much through power purchase, power purchase agreements, and you and then you can get into more details of where is that? Is it local mm -hmm. grid? Is it across the country? Mm -hmm. And is it is in PPAs in general? There's some as like, oh, did you just take up an existing PPA, or is it net new uh, production? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not an expert on this, but uh, our within our company that I've, I've been trying to learn a bit from our sustainable business unit. And uh, there are ways to quantify it. And I think to your point, it's important if you report that, okay, what it is, great. If you've got a PPA, you know, is it, where are you buying that from? Yeah, solar, yeah. In the same grid, local or not. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And to, okay. to answer Sean's question, uh, distance does matter. Yes, so yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, from a water point of view, you know, I, I don't, really personally consider much benefit if you're buying solar or wind halfway around the world, but your data center is actually being, you know, fed with a thermoelectric power plant, sucking multiple times more water than you, you would right. ever use on a data center. Like that, that's my kind of concern yeah. from a water point of view. Like, I don't care you're using solar if it's outside the grid. Right. Because, mm. yeah, because you are still drawing power from a grid which if it's right, thermoelectric is likely using water. It, right. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, that would, that would be my only thing, but if there's a way to put this into it, you know, total re renewable, you know, there's a factor or like only consider if within, you know, the interconnected grid that could theoretically send electrons to your yeah. data center. What, but I'm, what I'm going to an degree of complexity in there. Yeah, what I'm going to try to do is uh, uh, for them, you know, on what this number should be, 
I, I do want to align with uh, what, however, re renewable energy factor is defined, because uh, that's mm -hmm. that's a ISO standard, and they have a definition within that document. So I do want to align with that, and and in addition, we can state, uh, you know, specify how where that where that comes from. So um, that's a good comment. It, but you want to? It's worse than you think. So uh, <laughs> imagine. I was talking to the, the team. So as an example, when you get to, uh, let's say, scope two carbon, and there's, we, you know, we have specified location base. So I'm like, I'm connected to this grid, and this grid is whatever. This is the mix on the grid. Market-based would be, hey, in addition, you know, I also am purchasing, you know, blah, 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 blah. Now, uh, when you just list this, you know, if I'm if I'm a data center operator and I'm just saying, well, the local mix on my grid is X, um, there's probably some double counting because there's a chance that if there's renewable energy on that grid, there could be a different company that has a power purchase agreement for some mm -hmm. of the renewable energy that happens to be on that grid. So it's and, it, and it's not so it's not super clean at this point. But, you know, at least it's it's all I think right now, I think we are at a place where we want it to go all in the right direction. And as it gets more clear, we can get more specific. But, um, so going back to the uh, uh, um, participation in grid services uh, as a call out, um, uh, thoughts thoughts on that? So I'll give you a scenario. Um, uh, you know, more the more renewables that are on the grid. Uh, you know, it, it, there's stability issues. And so the grid operators look to companies to either provide, um, you know, sometimes it's as simple as peak shaving, uh, peak shaving um, services. That's the simplest one. But some of them, it is very fast frequency response. So if there's a variation in the, uh, in the, in the frequency of the grid, you can add load or remove load uh, from the grid. And it's a very quick type of thing to help stabilize the grid. Um, and then basically that enables them to put more renewables on because they have this, uh, you know, uh, basically community that's helping stabilize, stabilize the grid in different ways. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the example. And so us and other, other, like, as an example, vendors are, are offering like this type of, uh, um, uh, function as part of a UPS, you know, can do this uh, as an example. This, and there's other ways people do it. This came up on our what are, you know, heat energy call because someone was saying basically the same thing. But I think the question was, is any data center actually going to draw down, say, battery capacity to support the grid? Or are they going to basically be, no, no, that's our, you know, one hour battery <laughs> storage. Up. Like, I'm sorry, like, we can't risk our, you know, we need that one hour. Like, that's, I guess, my question. Is anyone actually yeah, going that, to that, give that, up? That, that's why we have it. Yeah, yeah like, uh, is yeah. anyone actually going to give up their, you know, redundancy to help the grid? Uh, I guess, you know, in the, in the past, no. <laughs> but mm -hmm. now uh, it's, it's happening. There are, uh, and then you point to, you know, again, progressive Scandinavia, Thank you, Peter. Um, there, there are, uh, <laughs> they, they are, sorry, uh, they are doing it. Um, uh, there are a couple operators. And again, there's different services. So you can imagine, you know, hey, if somebody's sorry. building a data center in a region that has a lot of renewables and they want to help, mm -hmm. they could say, hey, instead of getting my minimum five minutes of runtime, you know, I'm going to uh, uh, up my energy storage to 15 minutes. So that gives me, you know, uh, uh, you know, maybe five to 10 minutes of energy that I can use to participate in grid services. So it's things like that. Thanks. Another question is that, is this intended to be a binary metric or like an analog metric? Uh, at this point, uh, because it's a, it's a, um, I, I was thinking it's a, it's a, it's a binary. Are you doing it or not? Because the, the problem is, is uh, sometimes some areas do not, there's no grid services to participate in. Like there's nothing they can do in some areas uh, there are, and it may or may not line up um, 
with uh, with our capability. So because of the complexity of the marketplace for grid services, I wanted to do a binary yes or no. And again, the main reason is it just gets people thinking about it and that maybe they should be doing it. So that's... I mean, it makes and, sense to me. If it's a binary metric, I, it, it's kind of one of those, yes, you'll check yes, but it doesn't really- like You're doing it. I, I mean- I, You're doing it, but it's like, it's, you can't quantify what it's actually doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, can't, you cannot quantify yet, like, uh, oh, you know, what it's enabling yet. But, um, you know, we know yes is good if you're able to do it. And I would do it as a- uh, state whether you're doing it, but it's, you know, you don't have to have a yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, more of a visibility thing. Sorry, I can't remember the history of the use. Was there ever an option for like future potential metrics in here? <laughs> we, we had in the way Schneider looked at it, it's like, hey, these are basic, advanced and leading, you know, like, hey, if you're really, really good, you can do this one. Uh, we, in the last call, we simplified it to just re required to do if you want to get uh, uh, certified, and then and then recommended is would be the other one, uh, the other one. So, what about like maybe just at the end, like a section on you know forward looking potential oh. ones? Because there's probably a dozen or so. Like one of the things that like I could think of, no one talks about water quality return. It's all about water volume. It's an incredibly difficult thing to quantify water quality return, but that's something potentially if we wrap our heads around water volume, now you get into, well, what, what are you sending back in terms of chemicals in the same way of what volume are you sending back? But we're so we're years away from doing that. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, yeah, yeah, that, you know, that's a good thing. Cause then it's like, okay, not part of the program. We put it in there for visibility and as it matures, we can add it in. I, that's, I like that idea. Sprinkle in the thought for people to start talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good idea. Cool. All right. All right. Call it done. We'll do it that way for this. That's great. <laughs> um, do, 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 do as we go down. Okay, your other column, uh, uh, Sean, I wanted to make sure I understood this. So the, uh, you were talking about, um, uh, oh, uh, total site water usage. Uh, again, I have to go back and look. I was only going to point to current uh, international standards. So the, the WUE metric will have a, um, um, a way on what it, it calls. But I, but I agree, it, it should be um, withdraw. Usually it's withdraw mm -hmm. minus what put back potentially, right? But So then that would be consumption. Like if you look at typically, you know, Meta, Google, Microsoft, they only factor in consumption, yes. not withdrawal. Not so. withdrawal, right. So I think, but... Uh, let me get back to you, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'm basically going to refer to WUE standard on what it says for how to measure what site water usage. Okay, uh, that's fair. Yeah. But, and, and that can potentially be something that's just explained in the subsequent section. Of... Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of that and the ex explained, uh, so I fixed this, uh, I added the O to that. So I, I, uh, I agree, so I'm gonna hit that as resolved. Um, yeah, this common stuff works works good. I like it. This is the, this is and how. Sorry, was, I, I don't know, and there's maybe explained later, water replenishment. Ah, so that would be, there are cases. So we had added that, uh, we had looked at that. Um, uh, is, uh, there, there has been an, and maybe this goes into uh, the future thinking one, uh, but some operators are talking about being water positive in a way, how that happens. I'm not exactly sure, <laughs> um, but that, 
What are positive, in my understanding, generally has to do with offsite. So I'm a little bit concerned that like it's water positive is typically, well, great, you use 100 million gallons of water, but you have basically done offsite water projects. And honestly, a lot of it is just paying farmers not to farm of, you know, we it is, yes. more yeah, yeah, yeah. water. Okay. It's all very, it's, it, it, if you thought there was, gray areas with these carbon offsets it's like the same exact story just with water uh and i'm not trying to be you know negative it's just you get into a lot of this well there's three stories about restoring stream beds and then you actually look into a lot of these companies numbers and a lot of it is just paying farmers not to farm because we all know that agricultural water is 70 to 80 percent of what we use at least in the united states and the, and the term itself is of course uh, ridiculous. I mean, it can't really be water positive. It's like being energy positive. Yes. Yeah, and it, it's probably even more ridiculous, Peter, because you know, <laughs> not really feasible. Like, I know, I know, energy is not technically created or destroyed, but it definitely changes. You know, in forms where yeah. water is just water, it's vapor or liquid form. Yeah. And you're just moving it from a different place. On the so, uh, I am in, and I'm totally yep. up Except for this. You, it sounds like maybe. Um, maybe removing this from the metrics and uh, we could put something in the future or stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think honestly it would probably, like that could be future, there's probably more benefit of putting, and even if it's a binary metric of use of, you know, non-potable water for, yeah. you know, in, in in w, use you mean, usually, yeah, WE does talk about potable, not potable and stuff. So it's kind of baked into that metric a bit, but, um, yeah, it, there must there must be a, a a net like a net negative if it's uh, taking water out of something. So it water replenishment could could be part of that anyway. So I think we could just leave it out from the table. Uh, okay, cool. I will um, lean it towards removing. Okay. Okay, I like it. Great, great, great. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Um, these are so, uh, you know, obviously total waste and then specific call outs for east waste and battery waste because those are, we'll call it consumables and, um, and then basically the, uh, the ratio of those. So nothing. They are there. Uh, and then uh, land use, land use intensity, uh, noise, and then mean species abundance is a, it's actually it came out of France, but it's a, a developing metric that's a, about species per kilometer squared. Um, okay, so I, I started to noodle on how to break out. So basically for every metric, and, and again, I don't want to make this a, a hundred page compendium, you know, type of paper, but I think we need to, you know, uh, get into some detail. So I, 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 I'm very, very open to how we might want to structure each one. So, you know, okay, total energy consumption. Um, and, and pointing to this particular standard, which I can, I think actually I want to put the, um, add the name, uh, add the name of the standard because nobody, nobody knows numbers. Uh, add name of standard and, um, and then the units and then basically free text of, of, you know, explaining the, the metric, any, any, any particularities, and maybe uh, um, based upon what we've talked about before, maybe, um, and, you know, a, a section called like complementary uh, sub uh, metrics, you know. I don't know. Just think I'm, I'm, I'm riffing, thinking out loud here. Um, any, any thoughts on, on how, what, how you think this could be 
you know, each section could be organized. I like to keep it standardized so that, you know, everybody knows what they're looking at every time they scroll through. Yeah, I mean, it makes so, sense. Yeah. I mean, with, with the corresponding standards, I mean, I guess, I believe like what the European data centers, you know, metrics probably has something for all of them, but it might make sense if there's a corresponding, say, North American one. Yeah. Know, there's differences, but there may be different what do you parts mean? of the world. Got here. Are you saying something, Peter? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, can you ask? You, you keep breaking up. Is it is it my uh, on my I, end or, or can do you also feel you're breaking up? Uh, I think it's your end. I don't know, Sean. Have you been able to hear me? I can hear you fine, Rob. Okay. It's you, Peter. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, I'll just put, uh, you know, All right, great. Um, yeah, so all right. Da, 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 da. So I just, you know, uh, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing to it here. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of blanks. Uh, so reporting, um, uh, you know, so some general uh, words here, but uh, I was hoping to get Mike Dancy to uh, comment here. So. Uh, you know, there's going to be if, you know, how do we want people to report? So, you know, if if I'm, you know, a data center, you have to, there's going to be a, a list of things, you know, it's the name of the facility, the company, you know, maybe the age, uh, it's location, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we have to figure out maybe what that information is. And it might exist already with the dis data center facility uh, a data center OCP facility ready program. They might have like a, oh, I have a standard identification list. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, periodicity. So everything I can tell that, you know, all the, all the stuff is generally, they're all annual metrics. And so my recommendation is that everybody has to at least report them annually, but it would be recommended potentially to refresh it quarterly using the trailing 12 months. So mm -hmm. then you can kind of trend a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um you know can, uh, methodology. can i add to that Please? um uh, i'm not sure if i understood you uh, perfectly there but um when it comes to pue it's it's reported annually because it it uh, differs over the season um so i think that quarterly could also be a bit too seldom maybe uh, as as in may, maybe not for reporting but but for tracking I mean, oh, for tracking. Um, good. So, so I, I think we, we cannot uh, recommend that you track this or check this basically uh, once per quarter. That's that's great. Okay, let me let me put. Excel here monthly. Here we go. Does that capture your thoughts? It, yeah, and and I mean, of course, it. it PUE or energy, uh, basically, is, is, of course, perpetually uh, monitored by, by the DBMS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, and and I'll, I'll give you, here's my little uh, C story for for uh, PUE, actually. So we, we uh, I, I, was, uh, I was working in China. We had a, a, a chiller unit that we 
uh, installed at a uh, this this good demo site at uh, at IBM, mm -hmm. and uh, they were they had things monitored very nicely at their site, you know, PUE and stuff like that. And so, two months, let's see, it was installed in like October, uh, no, uh, September, and then December, you know, it's cold out, and uh, we got a call from them saying, "Hey, your chiller is freaking busted. Our PUE has gone way up." the compressors are running all the time you got to come fix your chiller I'm like gosh damn it what's going on so we go out there and um the filters were clogged the air filters it's beijing <laughs> the air filters were clogged right and they clean the air filters and shazam we're free cooling again so um that that's my that's my little c story on like you said you know continual or monthly tracking um yeah <laughs> well and does maybe some of this go to internal versus external reporting. I mean, most places are probably not mm -hmm. going to want to externally report more than once a year, just because mm -hmm. these reports take weeks to develop internally. Like some of the stuff, like they should be live, you know, reporting, you know, some of these metrics. But what, 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 why do they take weeks? I don't understand it. I think everything that, that we saw on the, in the table can be derived from, from performance data. These are very polished reports, I'd say, typically done by outside consultants to comply okay. with, you know, everything is perfectly curated. I mean, if you look at a meta, Google, like these are 100 page ESG reports yeah. um, that they spend weeks putting together and making sure that everything is utterly perfect because then all of us in the public rip apart everything if we don't like what we see. Um, I think it's just reality of any metrics. People, yeah. companies do the same thing with financials. Any missing yeah. de decimal point is like a huge deal to them. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I mean, if you have um, like a company like Cisco, for example, like 20, 25 years ago, that they they had all their performance data that they showed in, in real time. I mean, it just showed it oh, yeah. like you, like you could with any management system. And then, of course, they had their annual report. But uh, but maybe. But but maybe it doesn't work like that. Uh, I, yeah, I, I I agree actually with both of you. So what I what I put in here is, uh, you know, at a minimum for external reporting is annual. You have to do that, right? What we really recommend is is uh, quarterly, and some of the stuff can be live, like like you said. I think it's Cisco eBay did the same thing. So um, maybe let me let me let me put a comment in here. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just I'm just looking at Google's 2023 environmental report. It's a 104 page report. Yep, I very yeah, like very <laughs> well done. And I mean, this is just I'm not judging in any way. This is just <laughs> from what I've seen that the companies do for external reporting, and these clearly just take a lot of time to create something like this. Um, yes. It's it, this is a lot more than just numbers. You could probably condense this to two pages of data. Yeah. Um, but I think they want to give the context to the numbers is what I'm assuming that they don't and want to just spit out raw numbers. Yeah. And they might also want to tell them their story, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I can't really judge that, but, but uh, maybe. I mean, that's a perfectly fair thing yep. for them to want to do. Give context, give a story around what it is because as we know sometimes the numbers for for themselves don't give the full picture yeah okay um yeah that's good but I, I i think you know there are things that are continuously monitored like uh you know whatever your renewable energy is and pue and things like that and that would be interesting to show live so you, you know um but okay i Good stuff. So uh, methodology and assumptions, I just started to put, fill out this. I think it's going to be need a lot more. But as an example, uh, if you have to estimate things or if you are having some assumptions in there, they all have to be stated as you as you post these things. So for an example, when somebody's doing OCP ready certification and they come to the, the, the meeting and show their data center, a lot of these times they're new data centers. So they have a design PUE, right? So they got to 
here's my design PUE, and it's based upon these, these assumptions. So that's all this section's about. Where to report, I think Mark Dancy needs to let us know where, you know, is this publish on their own website? Is OCP going to collect this somehow and capture it and report it? I, I don't know. So um, that's an open question. So then I just have references appendix. I, and I'll add the uh, uh, future looking, uh, I think, section uh, so we can talk about some of that stuff. But um, that's, that's, where, that's, where, that's where it is. Well, uh, when it comes to reporting, um, I'm thinking, I mean, in, in, in the spirit of OCP, it, it, it's it's all about sharing basically to 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 create a better environment and and I mean for industry and for the for the world but but yeah. uh, so but so should we recommend that all of these metrics or some of them or maybe nothing is publicly reported I mean for me as a researcher it's really a pain in getting some sort of performance data it's just it's just uh, not, not not doable. Um, and if you want them to use open standards, that doesn't it also make sense that we should recommend that people actually publicly report somehow? Yes, yes, yes. I was assuming public, but I think you're right. We do need to specify this. Yeah, I mean, and and I mean, since very few, uh, very few organizations do that today, uh, especially according to the table you have up there, I've never seen any performance data like that uh, yeah. publicly reported. So it, yeah. if 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 you recommend it, it, I mean, we we really contrib contribute here. Yeah, yeah, good, good, um, and and let's if if uh, if you don't mind, we have a few more minutes. I would like to talk about what we think is required versus recommended. Um, and in my mind, this is a bit off of what is easily accessible data for most people to start off with uh, versus maybe more advanced. So uh, here you can see that I have total energy consumption, PUE, total renewable energy consumption. And then, then if you have those, you can easily get renewable energy factor, all would be required. Uh, energy reuse, I recommended because most people aren't doing that. Uh, Peter, yeah? No, sorry, I was just coughing. Oh, okay, okay. And then uh, as for the uh, carbon emissions, scope one, on-site required. Uh, scope two, both of these are required because one, you can get this almost directly from your grid operator. And if you're doing PPAs, you're going to have this one. And then scope three is still evolving. I have that as recommended. And, be, and then I have carbon usage effectiveness, which I believe I got to go look at the standard. I'm pretty sure it looks mainly at scope two. I can't remember. Recommended total carbon offsets recommended. And this one, of course, recommended because not many people are doing the hourly uh, matching. Do, do, do those make sense, you think? Yeah, I think we could as well do ERF uh, required because uh, the data say the data center operator or owner would know if if the uh, yeah, the outcome yeah you're, is you're absolutely right. You're right. If they're doing it, they're going to want to report it. Yeah, yeah. If it's, and if there, they're not, at zero, right, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Is there? Is there oh, sorry. Go up here. And no, no, no. I'm done. Um, is there a way to kind of? I mean, I. Are the European sustainability metrics, are those like basically like done or is that still in flux legally? It'll get finished, I think, at the end of this year. And the first reporting is May, I believe, based on that document that was sent out uh, that uh, she sent out last month. Um, but this um, captures most of those, I believe. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it makes sense to maybe even just with like asterisks or like uh, you know, kind of like a note, basically say like, well, if you're in Europe, you don't have a choice. Like, you're going to have to do this. So like, we we may say recommended globally, but um, for you Europeans, sorry, this is statutory. Like, that may give some context that like, we're not just blowing smoke telling you to do these. Um, parts of the world are going to have to. True. 
that that may give more kind of credibility that we didn't just pick these out of you know you know unintended like thin air um yeah that, that's a great point and it would be easy to just have a column with a with a check point yeah. box <laughs> yeah 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 good um i like it i like it great idea um, because if, if it's going to be required, I mean, as we all kind of know, you know, living in the States, you know, it's always historically been for the last 50 years, whatever California does with like automobiles by default, they de facto determine. And in some ways it could be like this with data centers. Well, if all the multinationals are going to have to do it, now they're collecting it anyway. They've got integrated supply chains around the world. It's probably not going to be that much more work for them to take the same system, same processes and procedures yeah. and replicate it other places yeah <laughs> you're right and and, the, uh, and i would assume that a lot of what is written in the in the eu um uh, declaration will also be echoed uh, in sooner or later in the us so it, it, uh, it, it's interesting to see what, what what's already there yeah well, so, american, <laughs> american politics <laughs> my, my analogy is uh um what's the what's the 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 cookie privacy law uh, that that Europe, mm -hmm. uh, what's it yeah. called? Uh, anyways, I love it when I'm traveling yeah, in Europe. EDPR. The EDPR, the the pop up is easy. You know, opt in or you have a simple button, opt out. In the U.S., it's either opt in or manage your choices, and then you get this manage your choices, and another field comes up, and you have all these double negatives. You're not sure. It's like it's a it's awful. It's like they they. They can get away with dumb stuff here in the U.S. because of that. Anyways, <laughs> I get off my soapbox. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so ba -ba -ba -ba. oh, I didn't change this. This is required. Uh, okay, the scope two market based and location based. Um I just wanted to know I, I'm sure you guys discussed it already. I just wanted to know um why they're both required. Um ah. even though I think the market based is more um comprehensive. So isn't should not be um recommended. Um so uh yeah so the idea of having these split out is to show um, and they do overlap some, well, is that, you know, you understand the type of grid that, you know, location-based, you, you know, you kind of get a view of the type of grid that the uh, data center is connected to. Okay. And then market-based is like, a, okay, what, you know, other financial net mechanisms is the company using to offset, you know, PPAs or what have you for, for, for that. Um, okay. And so that kind of gives you two different views. Um, and uh, the reason they did market based is if somebody is actually going out and doing PPAs, they're going to know the information. So, um, you know, it's easy to report. And if they don't know, it's, it'll be zero. It's just location based is like what you get, right? The local grid mix. Okay. All right. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, CUE, uh, but, but let me look at the EU. If the EU is uh, uh, has that as mandatory, I'll make that required. Uh... But, but that is much harder to, um, uh, to measure, isn't it? Uh, I... I got to look at the standard. I forget it. It's um, it's just the ratio, right? Of of if you already know your carbon on scope two, I don't think it includes scope three at all. I'm actually I'm almost positive that it does not include scope three. So if you already yeah. have this data, then you should be able to uh, report on it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then everything else here outside of WUE and uh, uh, water, I have everything else is recommended. Um, like right now, if you think about 
the total waste generated. Uh, I don't know how many companies really have, you know, the processes in place to, to weigh everything that comes in and out of the building or even estimate that, um, at least not right now. And, and the same thing, local uh, ecosystem is, is still, I think, developing uh, on, on the impact uh, there. So, I mean, I don't know, just think waste, I mean, it's probably not the hardest thing as an overall is, I mean, you're just basically roll off dumpsters. I mean, I, I guess you could estimate it. Yeah. Maybe not by metric tons, and maybe easier to, you know, by at least by volume at first, which isn't really the yeah. best, but it's all dumpster based, you know, waste management, such. E-waste, I mean, I'm sure all of these companies know, you know, every single hard drive, you know, that leaves out of the, you know, ERAD room. Yeah. I've been in data center. They got locked, padlocked, uh, you know, basically trash cans that they roll in and out um, of the building. Yeah. I, I feel like, yeah. Uh, and I think this is where I, I want to get a little bit broader community comment because I think I'm with you. These could be maybe required. I, I don't, in general, the broad community, I don't know how advanced they are with actually tracking it. I don't know. But man, if we're not close to doing it, I mean, e-waste is such a big deal. And you kind of know when you do your batteries that we've got to be very close to having most people to be able to do this. You know someone that would be good to talk to, but she's on maternity leave right now. Yeah, well, we got time. Sure, okay. Yeah. So, so again, our goal is to hopefully have this mostly done uh, by the end of the year, right? So, um, okay. so, what do you need help with from kind of a writing point of view at this point? Or is it yeah, just if if, uh, if there's any particular section uh, that you want to tackle, and Sean, you're a water guy. I don't know if you want to. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I tackle tackle that. I, I could take a look at it. I mean, honestly, my first pass is probably just going to be going through the European, you know, one as a start and yeah. then just back adding, you know, any additional ones. But that's probably a good place to start. Yeah. And, and again, I am not uh, the intent in, in my mind is we're not going to rewrite a, a, a standard. If there's a standard like, hey, there's the standard. And, and then we might have a few simple words to explain it, you know, like this should not be more than a, like, shouldn't be more than a page, right? It could be a half a page total for all of that. Oh, and I'll get rid of, I'll get rid of the water replenishment. I decided to, you know, I'll win a can it right now. Boom. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, you know, I guess, are, are the, is the actual description of the EN standards, those are public, right? Yeah. For the the high level, I I could uh, temporarily share with you WUE standard if you'd like, as long as you give it back. Yeah. It's got my name on it. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, the the high level are are um, you, you can find online. The the low level you, you would need to pay for. But but oh. uh, so let me start lot. out with the high level first, and we'll see if there's anything yeah. even needed. My only question would be, you know, like some of these, you know, PUE, WE, I guess they started out as green grid, then ISO, you know, came up with their only one just at some point, someone's got to do a sanity check that yeah. no one's doing anything different in the, in the way, because if it is, that might just be something to point out. Um, yeah, I could share with you the WUE. So they'd have, they'd have the language on, you know, you know, so yeah, I'll, I'll share that with you. Um yeah, have you uh, here? Send me a, a here. I'll put my email in the chat. I don't know if you've sent me an email directly, Sean. But um, uh, then we can. Um, uh, I can share that with you. So okay, cool. All right, a couple minutes. Any other comments? Comments, questions? Kind of a general thing I was thinking about. Within OCP, 
I'm wondering if there's any outlets just to have more time to discuss things in a less deliverable oriented fashion. Uh, I think that's this in, in, uh, you know, these, these work groups, uh, DCF and these are, are meant to be sharing, discuss and all that other type of thing. This does have a particular deliverable, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just sending stuff out and just seeing if anyone wants to just like, you know, have a virtual coffee hour or something like that. Yeah. That's a good point. Like just say, Hey, you know, no obligation come in and, and kind of bat around ideas and yeah like i'd love to like chat about like ideas about water but every time i talk to people it's always tied to you know a white paper or, or mm -hmm. a work stream that we have a deliverable and that's the intent of that one hour is to get something out we're usually struggling to meet the deadline yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah as yeah. opposed just to like going back and forth about like well like what do you really think about this metric you know as opposed to this metric and yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Interesting. I like it. So, uh, yeah, coffee hour. All right. Well, maybe we can chat about it next month. Yeah, but, yeah, um, let's do it for sure. Okay. What's there? Never cook it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Just, just an idea. But okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I got to jump to another call. But thank thank you guys very much for, uh, for, for your attention to this. Um, it's uh, good stuff. Yeah, it's great. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Have a good rest of your day. Okay. Bye. Bye.